So uh, right now we're in the laboratory. This is actually uh, a newer lab that I put together and I'm primarily utilizing it for mostly spawn and culture type uh, production. So this way I can kind of take some of the load off the other lab, which is mainly used for a lot of the inoculation of the sterile sawdust and uh, bulk substrates. Um, and kind of just do more and uh, be able to be more ahead. So today we've uh, sterilized some liquid media uh, for liquid culture inoculation. So it's actually been able to cool right in front of the sterile airflow of the HEPA filters. And uh, at this point we can unload it and begin uh, conducting the tissue transfers of some freshly colonized uh, agar and uh, grow out our mycelium like that. So we'll just depressurize the chambers. And that just escapes any uh, built up pressure inside of our uh, sterilizers. So yeah, in these jars we have uh, 500 milliliters of our liquid media. So it's just a nutritive liquid broth that we can use to expand out the mycelium. And uh, each jar is equipped with a magnetic stir bar, of course. So we can basically use that to agitate the mycelium and um, break it up, allowing it to be uh, intake through a syringe. So I'm just gonna pre uh, pre-label the jars before I get started. That way that helps with uh, just making sure everything's labeled. Uh, the worst thing that can happen, I guess, is uh, inoculating one of these and uh, not having it labeled properly, only to find out several weeks later that it was the strain that you didn't want, so, or that wasn't intended. And that could be for your, you know, a, a certain substrate preparation or a certain recipe pertaining to a certain strain and uh, you just didn't get it right because you just didn't know. So yeah, this lab is, is pretty similar to the, my other lab. Uh, they're both positive pressure labs. Uh, one thing different is the HEPA filters are basically recirculating uh, already HEPA filtered air in this room. So the air is brought in uh, by two, two foot by two foot uh, HEPA filtration units. Those that have a pre-filter brings in air from the next room over. Uh, it actually passes through a, a UV light, so that kind of kills any bacteria. Then it passes through HEPA filtration. Once it comes into this room, it's actually recirculated into these HEPA filters, so the air is super clean. And it also creates a positive pressure in the room, so any uh, dust or contaminants uh, are blown outwards instead of coming into the room. Uh, the room is mainly focused on liquid cultures and spawn production. So there's an autoclave built into the wall. So this is a horizontal autoclave that you can load from the opposite end and unload right here directly into the lab in the clean room. So this just helps with the uh, production of uh, spawn, maintaining cleanliness, and also, uh, yeah, just makes it a lot easier. And then we just uh, can store like petri dishes and stuff in here. So we have some racks, uh, shelving units. And we can also store uh, colonizing cultures. And then we just have like some nutrition, uh, nutritional medias and ingredients in here that we can use to make up certain recipes for liquid cultures, uh, agar, slants, all that stuff. So this room is great for that. We also have a few of these uh, smaller uh, autoclaves. They're all Americans uh, and they do great for like sterilizing small amounts of uh, cultures, uh, liquid media or uh, agar, stuff like that. So. Really this room, just uh, this lab, really helps take uh, a lot of stress off my plate because I can come in here while another lab is running and just start working on cultures and you know really getting into the work that I like doing, so yeah. But all in all, both labs are very, uh, very good labs that, you know, taking care of the jobs they need to do or stuff like that.
I'm kind of just uh, giving these plates just a nice douse of alcohol. Make sure that they're nice and clean. So I'll just loosen up my lids real nice. So it's a plastic cap uh, with an injection port. So it's a self-healing injection port. After you inoculate uh, or inject a needle into it and remove it, the hole will close up. And also has a syringe filter that allows uh, adequate gas exchange during the colonization. So I'll just take uh, my scalpel, see, douse the handle just a little bit. Take that lid off. Just touching the scalpel in the middle, it cools it down instantly. Then remove the liquid culture to the magnetic stir plate. We can kind of swirl, give a nice mix, agitate the bit of mycelium that was placed in there, hoping that little fragments of mushroom mycelium break and swirl throughout the liquid, uh, increasing the growth rate of the mushroom mycelium. All right, so all, all the inoculations have been done. And at this point, we can set our liquid cultures up here to colonize for about a week and we'll just check on them every day mixing as needed and once full colonization occurs we can start extracting the liquid culture into syringes and storing them for future use or we could also just put the whole jar right into cold storage and that'll keep the liquid culture viable for several months, I've seen them go for well over a year, uh, just as long as they're stored correctly. So they last quite a while. And we can see some at full colonization. This was actually inoculated March 13th. And I'll just come to it and take some liquid uh, mycelium as needed. This is actually a shiitake mushroom. This is the 3782. And uh, yeah, just a really healthy culture. One of the things that I look for in the liquid culture is the how cloudy is it and can you see through it. Uh, so basically I can really see through the liquid uh, except for the mycelium. But if you kind of see like a milky cloudiness start to occur then that's most likely a bacterial contamination. Uh, liquid culture is very tricky if you don't have the uh, proper sterile technique to work with it. Because it's something that you won't find out if it's not, if it's uh, contaminated or if it's unviable, uh, you really can't find out until you inoculate it with it. So it's, it might not be something to put a lot of hopes into for like big, big production if you're just starting out. Uh, it might be best to start with like working on agar and, and being able to see the mushroom mycelium grow out right on a nice little two-dimensional surface such as a, a nice solidified agar. So this is a different liquid culture. This is another Pia Pino one. And we can see that this one's fully colonized. A lot of the times you'll start to see a mycelial mat develop on the surface of the liquid. Uh, this can just be uh, re-agitated. So like if, I'm, was, if I were to use this right now, let's see if I can get that. So I would just basically simply agitate the mycelium by stirring it on a magnetic stir plate. And I can let that happen for about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, the longer I let it happen, the more the mycelium can be broken down. And from there, it can just be sucked right into syringes, or you can even open up the jar and pour it directly into substrate or grain. Uh, really, you should only be using liquid culture for grain spawn inoculations. And then from there, you can go to a substrate of your choice or of the desired species. So then this is a turkey tail liquid culture. This is actually about a week old. Turkey tail is uh, one of the fastest colonizing uh, mushroom species that I've worked with. Usually seeing it taking over liquid culture or grain spawn or substrate within a matter of five to six days. So it's a very quick developing uh, mycelium. A little bit slow, slower of a fruiter, but it's a highly renowned medicinal mushroom. Uh, so 
it's a great one to add to your library or just to have in your medicine cabinet.